Bien, OpenAI sacó GPT-5 y lo que vamos a ver hoy es que han creado un, un hackathon estos días y vamos a ver pues, que están construyendo la comunidad con GPT-5. Eh, como veis, pues reunieron a más de 275 personas, les dieron acceso a GPT-5 durante 24 horas y han creado una serie de cosas. Tenían, pues bueno, básicamente créditos infinitos. Y este es, eh, luego va, veremos el vídeo, pero el que ha ganado la medalla de oro es básicamente el, este, esta persona de aquí, que está su cuenta de Twitter y como veis, pues bueno, es gente que ya tenía su empresa, no es gente pues que no tiene conocimientos, así que montó el, ola, el oráculo de Delphi, que básicamente es para tiendas online y esta persona lo que hizo es crear clones digitales que veremos predictivos de clientes reales, es decir, básicamente un clon AI de un cliente real, lo que le permite pues, a los vendedores simular estrategias futuras de marketing y precios antes de implementarlos en su tienda. ¿vale? Luego vemos el vídeo, pero la idea es que tengo una, unos clones de mis usuarios, voy a lanzar un nuevo producto, voy a lanzar una nueva estrategia de marketing, puedo predecir si va a funcionar o no. El segundo lugar, pues aquí tenemos al usuario, ¿vale? También hay made videos, bueno, tiene su propio canal de YouTube, 100.000 seguidores. Y esta persona lo que desarrolló es básicamente que las redes eléctricas están saturadas con la cantidad de datos necesarios para gestionar operaciones complejas y Pravat desarrolló un marco de orquestación de redes con agentes para recibir datos multimodal analizarlos y coordinar pues este tipo de acciones de respuestas y por último tenemos a este usuario vale, aquí tenéis su perfil de linkedin no pone mucho pero bueno vamos a ver en este caso lo que ha realizado básicamente archon controla eh, todo tu ordenador mediante el lenguaje natural utiliza capturas de pantalla para ver el razonamiento de gpt5 y planificar y ejecutar clic pulsaciones de teclado para automatizar tareas bueno esto me parece una copia a un producto que se supone que ya tiene OpenAI, así que vamos a ver el, el ganador vale que es recordar que es eh, clones digitales predictivos de clientes reales para saber si vas a vender o no a través de tu página web así que vamos a darle play al vídeo First up, give it up for Jintu. Hi guys, can you hear me? Okay, obviously. Um, we're Team Gentoo. Uh, we just flew here from Seoul, like day before yesterday, just for this hackathon. Uh, like it's crazy, right? <laughs> um, the, the more crazy stuff is that we built an Oracle of Delphi for uh, Shopify stores. And before we move on, we want to show what we built. Um, so as a startup, Uh, like we are building an AI concierge, just like Rufus in Amazon, to help people find the products they want. So basically, uh, we did that for like a lot of years. And now, uh, due to that, we have a lot, like millions of uh, people's like conversation data and like their clicks, their scrolls, and like basically like their purchase behaviors and everything. And uh, by that, uh, we thought that we could build a digital clone so that the Shopify sellers could predict their future, like what um, like marketing campaigns would work actually without like, um, like doing nothing, like just on simulation. So uh, using GPT-5 thinking, um, we made actual digital clones of actual users. So like for example, like these are like one of the clones that we made for a single store. Engagement score means that the higher engagement score you have, um, like you would have like more purchase, like you wrote reviews, like it literally means that you're more engaged. So um, after that, um, we built like this uh, admin page from scratch, only using a GPT-5 in um, cursor, CLI, and IDE. So um, these are the actual like concerns that the Shopify stores here in San Francisco they have. We interviewed them the day before yesterday. And then like, for example, we can click on, how can I sell like inventory? That's not like bestsellers. So um, GPT-5 would give strategies. And of course, to do simulation, we have to um, like give them a hypothesis. And if you click on the hypothesis that you want to simulate and just click run, it would, um, like this is the fun part, like the AI clone of, your, of the actual users would vote uh, whether these hypotheses would work or not. 
So um, the fun part also is that since GPT-5 can say uh, that if they don't have enough back data to like confirm these hypotheses, they actually say um, like unknown, so undefinite. But this is a very new feature because one, when we run this in like 4.0 or previous models, they never said like unknown. Like they were always positive. Like they always said like um, like they would. It, it's so good. But now like GPT-5 says unknown when they don't have like they're not they they don't have the back data. Also, we gave give summaries, and we also um, they made this cool part called Vive Operations. So it's uh, literally like Vive Operations, like Vive Coding. We made a lot of um, like actual um, action plans that we can um, Im uh, we can uh, put in the store. If you click one and then click Deploy to your store, it would automatically deploy to your um, like Shopify store in one click. So GPT-5 has the whole control of the UI layout of your store. And then, like, boom, you would have a special category sale. And, well, let's click another one. Then you would have, like, a, you would like to feature a top selling product. It would come here, like, boom. And then, um, since um, our main product is the concierge, the AI chatting, we can also, like, input, like, custom prompts. Then um, it would actually like change how our AI concierge works because like the new prompts are injected. So if you just click op open, oops. So the internet's just slow, but like the how AI concierge talks would actually be different. Oh, okay. Um, so like uh, as I mentioned, like these um, AI clones are actually made. Uh, from real like users, so it would have like the profiles, and it would also say like why I support the hypothesis and not why I reject. So um, these are all ran by GPT-5, and um, you have a clear reason that you can actually see why like these marketing campaigns would work on your shop or not. Did you uh, what was the hardest part of this to build? Um, so the hardest part was that we had to ensure that these predictions were correct. So um, we did, we used, we had to inject a lot of data, but we had like a very limited um, token because like like the data itself was like um, like for from like um, like millions of users. So that was the hardest part that we did. And then also since GPT-5 could sync a lot, but if we don't have the best settings, like the latency could be so long. So that part was the verbosity and like the, uh, how much thinking that GPT-5 would do. That was the most time uh, that we spent on prompt engineering. On, on the technical side of creating these digital clones, did you, how did you prompt it to create these particular clones from the data set of all your customers? How did you like limit it down to these particular ones? So um, since we already have our AI concerns, the AI chatbots, we have our uh, metadata, for example, like, um, like purchase details and like purchase patterns and every metadata that we have. So we already did a lot of A-B testings on what kind of metadata is actually relevant to prompting the AI model itself. So well, AI prompting and like creating these like AI clones might be a bit different, but like we had like a certain a criteria of doing it. And also, um, since we have an SDK that like um, scraps all like the session data that we have, we also added like click data and like session time and scrolls and like everything. And then like it was up to a GPT-5 to whether like determine the engagement scores and also like um, what data would they use on determining on like support or reject these hypotheses. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you to you.